Well, my friend Esther, it is so lovely to be with you and have this opportunity to hear more of your story. So thanks for joining us on the Learn to Listen series. Thank you for being here, for allowing me to be here. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I'm so excited and I've enjoyed getting to know you and I am just fascinated by your life and by the ways God has placed dance within you and so many other things that I'm excited for you to be able to share. So I'm just going to let you start sharing more about your background, faith background, dance, arts background, and um, just give us the insight. Well, thank you again, um, Cynthia, for just allowing me to be a guest on your um, listening series. And um, I, my name is Esther Dukes, like she said earlier, and I, um, I was born and raised in the Bahamas. I currently live in Birmingham, Alabama. And um, so I, two different worlds. I grew up on the island. <laughs> And um, so I grew up in church. I don't think I've ever remember a time when I didn't go to church, you know? So, but of course, you know, we started out, it's more, okay, my mom will say I'm going to church. There wasn't even a choice if we were going, you were going anyway. And, but I learned, I love the Lord at a very young age. And I, I, I think I'm probably more love the things of God and, um, and I also went to a Christian school. So I was constantly around the word of God, constantly around just the things of God. And I just grew to love it. Fast forward um, a little bit later on in my journey. And my, um, I, my church, my, I went to a Baptist church. And the church that I grew up in, they decided that they were going to do a dance ministry, which was like almost like taboo at the time. It was tab a lot of churches weren't doing it. And I'm still not sure how we even got um, my pastor to agree to it. Because I remember the first time I wasn't a part of it for the first time they danced at church. But I remember the older saints, they just thought we had let Satan loose in the church. And at the time we were doing very, very limited movement. So it wasn't like really dancing, like you move in and throw in your legs or whatever. Oh, that would have been, we probably would have gotten thrown out. <laughs> they would have called the ushers to tell us to take us out. But anyway, at the time I was um, serving in the choir, but I also always had a love for dance. I didn't take dance classes at a, as a child. I went to a few like dance camps. But at the time, my mom couldn't afford, it was a bunch of us. She couldn't afford to send me to dance class, which was fine. But I decided that, okay, yeah, I wanna go ahead and do dance. And we had to make a choice because the rehearsals were just kind of overlapping. And so a choir director told us one time, if you leave my rehearsal one more time for a dance rehearsal, don't come back. So I just didn't come back. <laughs> But at the time, it wasn't a calling or anything for me. It was just, oh, I wanted that. And the team I was on and our leader, she was just a woman of excellence. Even though we were still trying to learn what it was, it was always ministry. Everything we did was always ministry. She couldn't choreograph. So we had a lady come in and she did all the choreography. She, she, she taught us a whole lot. She was actually like law enforcement. So our stuff was rigid. So I grew up, I started out with the discipline, the discipline as a dancer and also being taught in the word what we're trying to do, you know? So that's my, that's my earlier days of dance. And um, fast forward coming into the US, I came here and would go to college. And then um, after college, ended up in Birmingham with a job, found a church and just so happens that dance ministry was huge in this particular church. In fact, it was part of the ministry. So it wasn't, okay, y'all can come and dance and it was a filler. No, it wasn't a filler. It was a part of it. And so that's when I learned more of the ministry side of things. And that's when I believe I was called to that, for lack of a better word. So then that's, I don't know, if you, you know, Veronica, Veronica was over the ministry then. And so I kind of came up under her and when she left, I took over. So a lot of teaching went on in there. And I, so all of my, all of my 
all, all of my um, association, I guess, for lack of a better word, with dance ministry, it was always, I, I was aware of, on the, of the why. So I wasn't just doing it because it was something to do. Everyone who taught me and every leader that I came up under, they understood it. And so that's kind of my background. I was, like I said, I'm not a professional dancer, but God allowed me to go to a lot of workshops. I went to a lot of conferences. I did classes here and there. So that's how I was able to grow. But before, before I was even able to grow in my, with my skill set, God gave me the gift of sight. So when I heard music, I didn't just see dance. I saw visions. So he, he, from start to finish, and that's how I look at, like dance were, music was kind of like my sermon that I was getting ready to deliver with my feet. So that's how it was for me. It was almost like I would listen to music and I would start seeing dance and seeing movements and seeing flags and seeing banners. And so I believe he gave me the gift of sight before he gave me anything else as it relates to dance ministry. Um, and um, and I'm sure I'll tell you more, but I feel like I've been talking too much. So. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. No, it's, it's exactly. wonderful. To, it's always great to get the backstory because mm -hmm. it helps us to understand where people have come from in your own journey. Mm -hmm. um, as you articulated, you know, at your church or in that area, that dance wasn't accepted. I remember back in the um, 80s when I became a believer and really understood a new faith with Jesus and old love with dance. The first church that I danced at in Colorado, there were um, two women, it was a pretty large congregation, but there were two women, elderly women, I would say they're probably in their late seventies, eighties. Um, as, and they were um, forewarned, everybody was told, okay, we're going to have this special song and we have um, a dancer coming to um, present. Um, and as soon as the first chord was struck um, and I started coming out, I saw these two older women, they just sat like this and then they got their um, bulletins and just went and just covered their face the whole song <laughs> and they were like right in the, down in the front and I thought okay well lord be honored and be praised because Correct. we're not doing anything that is dishonoring to you but it just was the times and this church was the first time that they had had dance as well so oh, wow. it's you know, it's, we've come a long way, but we still definitely have a long way to go, but I appreciate your, um, you know, your faithfulness. And as I've read through the scriptures many times, and I'm reading in through the old Testament again, God changes the heart of the individual. And so my guess for you would be that that's what happened. Like, how did we ever get the pastor to degree? Nobody could have convinced him. I'm sure it had to be the spirit of God that said, Correct. this is biblical and this is what we're going to to focus on it's good so that sight that you've been given that you see um but i also have spoken with you so i know you hear and that you hear yeah. from the lord so share about cultivating that both the the seeing and the hearing because that's all a part of the receiving from god i'd, I'd love to hear more about both so i think cultivating listening um being um listening learning to listen. I feel like that's not a natural thing <laughs> for humans, but you have to be intentional. That's for me, you have to be intentional because a lot of times, first of all, listening to the Holy Spirit, let's go there and then we'll move on to people, but listening to the Holy Spirit, even like for me in my quiet time, and that's early in the morning, around five, six, six thirty in the morning, according to what I have on my plate, Sometimes if you're not careful, you can be, you listening, but you have to kind of like silence your own thoughts and your own um, mind and your own will. Because there are times for me when I'm just in total submission in terms of my listening. And I'm just listening, Lord, what are you, what are you, what are you saying to me? Or what I would do is I would, you know, I would do maybe a, um, a worship song and a lot of times I just have to turn it off um, and I just start singing to the Lord I'm not a great singer but sometimes I feel like he just want to hear me 
but and then I would listen and I would just stay there and listen and for me I just I can't be in silence for long periods of time that's called probably a weakness for me I don't know but so you know I just say Lord what are you saying and I have to constantly be either stop reading my word but the intentionality is I'm saying, God, I, I, I want to hear from you and I'm posturing my heart and humbling my heart to listen to what you're saying to me right now. There are times I will pick up my journey, my journal and just start writing. So whatever comes to my spirit, I just start writing while I'm listening, just to start writing. And for me, that helps me more than just sitting down in utter silence. A lot of times I just start writing what I hear. Now, listening, learning, Listening to learn, I think that takes a lot of humility because sometimes the, what I want to say, the, um, oh gosh, I wrote it down. <laughs> I think sometimes the personality can, get, can be a stumbling block. And I feel like we can learn from anyone. Just like if I don't know you, Cynthia, and you're the, main speaker at an event, just to what, yeah. And my head is, oh, who is she? I don't even know who she is. So that's a that's kind of like a, a stumbling block for me right now because I'm more worried about who you are than what you're saying. So for me, I try to go past um, personalities and just open my heart and my ear to hear regardless of whoever is speaking. I feel like we should honor anybody who, who's, who comes in front of us, because if they're in front of us, somebody honored them enough to be there. So that's how I start looking at people, period. You know, I just start honoring people, not because you have a name, not because you have a title, but, and what, you know, and, and if something you're saying, it doesn't kind of connect with me, I just filter it out and keep on listening. And so that's for me. It's mm, good. The scripture, the, um, how God says that I'll lead you and guide you with my right hand upon you, just that sense of his righteousness. But I love what you articulated about how if somebody is before us, then it's trusting that someone else has put them in that place and mm -hmm. that we're to honor them. And I also really appreciate hearing when you get to know someone, then it can be more helpful than to hear them. And that's so incredibly true of the Lord. We can choose to believe that the scriptures are true. We can choose to believe that the stories of the forefathers and foremothers that have gone before us, that how God interacted with them is true. We can choose to believe that, but I believe it's easier for us to believe when we know the heart of God, when we know his attributes, when we know his characteristics, when we know God then it's so much more easy. And maybe it might take a little less faith. I don't know, but it definitely takes a sense of believing that God is all of these amazing things and all of those different ways of his characteristics and attributes, and that he is going to be that for me in this situation, mm -hmm. or he's going to be that for us in this trial, or he's going to prove himself faithful again. So I appreciate that is true mm -hmm. in the human interaction and relationship but how much more true is it in our divine encounters with God? And I think we have to train our ear to hear because a lot of times, you know, we can say, oh, I wonder if God is speaking to me. But if you never act on what he tells you to do and be obedient, how do you know that it's, it's him or it's not? You know what I'm saying? So I feel, I feel like if we, have, if we have that relationship with God and it's not him, he will throw a red flag. And that's how I feel. So I'm going to act on it. If I, if I feel in my spirit that God is telling me something, I'm going to act. Mm -hmm. And knowing that he loves me enough to draw a caution to the wind or bring somebody in my path and say, yes, then no. You know, who I trust, because God has put people in our path who the mentors and, you know, spiritual leaders and, you know, different people like that who we've trusted over the years. Mm -hmm. And those people who can see our blind side. So mm -hmm. therefore, I just trust that if, if I decide that, hey, I believe God is telling me this, and for the most part, I would run it by somebody. Mm -hmm. I believe that in a multitude of counsel, there is safety, um, certain things, you know, but 
I, I believe that he will throw a red flag if it's not him. So mm -hmm. I just trust him like that. Yes, good. So share a little bit more about your creative practice. Just when you were talking about how you see and all these things yes. come to you, can you share a bit about that? Yeah, okay. So for me, um, now within the last year and a half, well, really since more so after the pandemic, during the pandemic, I was doing a lot of solo stuff. And um, prior to that, I was over a dance ministry. Like I told you, Veronica's the one that, you know, Veronica, um, she was leader. And then I became the leader afterwards. But for a, a choreographed piece for me, I would pray and ask the Lord, okay, give us a song. And at the time, we were dancing every first Sunday. So that was set. That was ten in stone for many, many years. We danced every first Sunday. Well, the thing is, we didn't know what the pastor was preaching about, and we never communicated that. He, he, he trusted the God in us, you know what I'm saying, to come up with whatever it was. So I would pray and say, okay, God, what do you want us to do? Mm -hmm. And if I believe that, you know, this is the song, he would always give me a scripture to go mm -hmm. with the song. And so I would actually bathe myself in that scripture. Mm -hmm. So by the time I presented to the team, and at the time we had a decent sized team, it was like about 40 something dancers. And we had various different skill levels. I'm talking about we had up to like skill dancers who were trained from kids. And then we had dancers who couldn't even spell dance, but you know, they were there, <laughs> bless the Lord. But so, and then some in between. so we had a, you know, it was just, so we, we always had like modified version of choreography. And, but for me, you know, I would pray and, and then we will, I would go and, you know, before I present choreography, we always read scripture and we always talk about the scripture and what God was doing, you know, and then, in terms of my creative um, process, I would listen to that song over and over again. And it's almost like the song was, is like a flower and it just keep, it kind of like a rose. It just kept opening up and blooming and you see different sides and different facets of it. The more you listen, the more you listen, the more you listen. Before I even start any type of, type of choreography, I would listen over and over and over again. If I'm in my car, I'm listening, you know, before I go to bed and just all day. And so that's how it's like he would give me vision. As I always look at a song, I look at it more of a, like a production piece. It was more like, okay, I'm, I'm getting ready to produce this production piece. And that's how it was. So we've always had like bigger songs as opposed to the two and three dancer song. We always just always had these production pieces. Mm -hmm. And once I, um, once I was kind of set on the vision, then we would start the choreography like that. And so, yeah. Mm, that's good. That's a good way of soaking. Just really mm, oh, yeah. soaking in. Yeah. And so you've had different skill set with the community. I'm sure you've had as a leader, other leaders that have risen up amongst oh, yeah. you. What have you helped to cultivate in them? What do you value as a leader and other people in that quality area of I, leadership? I think one of the things for me, I feel like you have to speak to people's potential and not their behavior. And for me in dance ministry, that was one of the biggest things because you had dancers who, um, I don't know, it, and I guess it was more of an age thing, more of the, it was a lot of teenagers on our, our team. Um, because we had we had the teenagers and adults at the time dancing together, and then we had the kids ministry separate. But we had dancers from 13 all the way up to 50 something, and it's a wide um, you know range. But that's just how it was organized at the time. And um, and so there were times when there were, I guess, the teenagers they were just acting totally you know, just outside of character sometimes. But I knew them because I've spent, I spent time with them before. So I knew something was wrong. So I didn't just automatically say, hey, okay, you just need to get up out of here because we're not gonna, we're not gonna, you know, we're not gonna tolerate that. But you kind of get to know them better. And, and, and not only that, what I did was I empowered them. 
So I gave them opportunity to say, hey, can you come up with this phrase right here? You know, let me see what you can do. Or we gave them opportunity to just say, hey, um, can you, um, I, need, I need a leader for just this set, this team of dancers, something like that. Or just, just giving grace to people when they make mistakes. Mm -hmm. I, I just feel like sometimes we don't give enough grace to people. Uh, yeah. We, yeah. we automatically, you know, we, we're going we, we gonna to automatically reprimand. And I understand that. But sometimes people are just having a bad day. Yes. <laughs> That's yeah. it. Yeah. And just celebrate people win. Sometimes, yeah. just, I mean, if you know you have a dancer on a scale of one to 10, who's a five, and they move up to a six or even a five and a half celebrate that win sure. that's good add value add value to them tell them how great they were and how awesome they were in yeah. in rehearsal you know something like that and just just being a full-time encourager just that's be an good. encourager because anybody can tell me how, how how much I suck and I know the areas you know I'm not doing well in but if you can encourage me I can be better and yeah. so that's what that's, that's what I think yeah, that's, it's good. We all need a little bit more encouragement for sure. And I appreciate that perspective of what we can say that we see in someone. They might not even be able to see it themselves. Correct. And then it can start to give them the vision for that, which is um, greater than what they've imagined or bigger or more responsibility. So I, I appreciate that perspective yeah. of you know calling out of people leadership qualities or um, responsibilities and entrusting them with it and people will rise up in that so yeah. it's, it's a beautiful way because um, there's so much negative already around our lives and so much that you can't and you won't and you never correct yeah oh gosh if we can <laughs> you know not be another voice in that. Um, uh, so you've lived in the Bahamas, you've lived in the States, you know about dance there, you know about dance here. <laughs> what kind of differences are there? I don't think there is a huge difference. I think um, the culture in the Bahamas, one of the things there is, I think people, people are, I don't want to say it, to sound like I'm comparing the dancers here to the ones in the state in a negative light, but I think people are a little bit more passionate on the islands, period, about everything. <laughs> <laughs> even, even the way they talk, the way they, you know, people are a little bit more passionate. But in terms of um, in terms of commitment to Christian dance, I think it's from church to church. That's mm -hmm. what I think. So just like here, it's according to how how much how how your church see dance and how they mm -hmm. value it mm -hmm. i think it's the same thing in some churches in the bahamas dance a dance is just a filler maybe they didn't have mm -hmm. any place anything to put in that spot yeah. but then some other churches they understand the value mm -hmm. and 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 the power that mm -hmm. comes through the dance ministry mm -hmm. so I, and i see that i see i don't i don't think there's a huge difference i really don't yeah. see i don't see there's a huge huge difference because yeah. I still have a lot of friends and I've, and I've actually gone back to do workshop um, for churches in the Bahamas. Mm. So I, I honestly don't see a huge difference. I don't yeah. see a huge difference. You can take me with you the next time you go. <laughs> <laughs> I love that fiery, fiery spirit. <laughs> that passion is so beautiful. Just the cultural diversity all around the world. I know that yeah. there's some stereotypes of particular people groups. And sometimes they, those stereotypes have come because there is some truth to it. Um, but we don't ever want to limit um, anyone from saying they have too much spirit or not enough spirit or mm -hmm. too much, too much passion, or not enough passion. Let God be the determinant of that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you've seen God move there in the Bahamas. Do you have a general sense of how God is using the arts today or what is your hope or dream and, and even visioning of the position of the arts for the future? Just would love your take on um, 
how you feel like, because you've articulated clearly that there's some times when dance could be used as a filler. And you've also articulated that you've experienced it when, um, and I have too, been a part of times where the orator, the person that's speaking really has this much of um, a voice in the collective worship gathering. And it's the dance that's the bigger part in that particular ceremony or worship gathering or service um, because it can more than stand on its own. It, it God uses it in profound ways. So I just would love to hear any thoughts you have. I think I honestly believe that God is restoring the art and we, we use that terminology a lot, but I honestly believe that. And what I mean is, you know, dance, especially in Christian, in, in, you know, in, in Christendom, it has a lot of times, it has such a negative connotation because it's compared to the world, like it's a worldly term. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that God is going to use the dance, even in the mission world. And I say that because people are not intimidated by a group of dancers coming together. They would listen to the message because mm -hmm. really they, they don't have on a suit and they don't, I mean, a suit and they don't, they're not coming in the name of a particular religion. Mm -hmm. And so that's why you have people like Bali Magnificat who can go all over the world and people accept them. And I'm sure there are some places they probably, I don't know, couldn't go. But for the most part, people are not intimidated by, you know, a group of ballet or a group of um, dancers. And, and even if they have a message of Jesus, a message of hope. But I really believe God is anointing the vessels to the Bible tells us that the anointing destroy yokes. And dance mm -hmm. is not anointing vessels are anointed mm -hmm. you know so i believe that god is anointing dancers he's anointing you know um i'm a group of people and he's rising up a group of dancers and artists who are gonna go and they really are through their movements mm -hmm. they really are gonna break pull down tear up Mm -hmm. and, and just and just really do damage to the kingdom of darkness. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but soften the hearts of men mm -hmm. because the word of God is never gonna be, dance is never gonna be a replacement for the word of God. But there are times when the heart of man need to be softened. And I believe that dance is something because people are visual. A lot of times people are more visual then they are going to sit and listen to a message for an mm -hmm. hour, however long. So I believe that a dance can soften a person's heart when it's done with the anointing of God mm -hmm. and, 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 and by the Holy Spirit leading. And I believe that it will soften the hearts of people and the Holy Spirit can draw them to Jesus. Mm -hmm. So that's what I believe. I really mm -hmm. believe it's going to be a part, it's going to be heavy in the mission field. Mm -hmm. Whether that's global, local, outreach, however, however you want to, because you know, some people have a different definition mm -hmm. of mission, but I feel like globally, nationally, locally, I feel like it's going to be a part of, you know, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. That's what I believe it's going to be. Mm, that's good. Well, it's a language. It's, yeah. a, it's a language. And it because is. of that, it just crosses over many language um, barriers that we have when we have a spoken language. Uh, so I, I appreciate what you're articulating and it, it is happening and dance isn't going away. Dance is continuing to thrive. There's more dance studios, more dance shows. I mean, there's dance is a part of our culture here in, in the United States and many other cultures. So it makes sense that God would use it because it continues to thrive that he'll use and, that. And I've experienced that. I was in India on a mission trip in 2015 and I had an opportunity to dance and that particular, well, we always um, traveled with a, a you know interpreter on, on that trip, but that particular time I did an English song and I knew there was a, you know, there was a language barrier, but it's, but it's some, I don't know, those people I saw women weeping 
Mm. And they were crying, even though they didn't know the language. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The spirit of God Mm -hmm. worked and moved through the dance. And so Mm -hmm. that's how I know, you know, it transcends Mm -hmm. language. And like you talked about all the different barriers, it transcends those. Mm -hmm. Because when the Holy Spirit and the anointing of God is on that person and those dancers, you can do a whole lot with just movement than you can do if somebody stood up there and declare certain things. And Mm -hmm. like I said, I'm not taking away from the word of God because I love the word of God. And it will never, the Bible tells us that his word will, it's going to accomplish exactly what he sets out to accomplish. But I do believe there are different, um, though the Bible talks about there are different administration administration of gifts. So I do believe dance is one of them. Mm, That's good. That's good. Wow. There's so many wonderful nuggets that you're sharing. Um, Well, as we're coming to a close, what else would you like to share? How else would you like to encourage us? How else would you like to admonish us? Um, Because I know you've got a wealth of wisdom. So (laughs) (laughs) I think you have more wisdom. (laughs) I've got the gray hair. (laughs) That might mean something. (laughs) You're a pioneer and you're leading the charge in the dance world like never before and the thing about it is you're a connector and I think for me I'm nowhere where you are but I believe that the Lord has allowed me to connect dancers I I don't want to go anywhere on my own and even the places I haven't gone I would you know I'm I, I love people I love the Indians I love the Africans the Europeans, the Asians, the Caribbeans, I just, I just love people. And so, you know, there are some people, they say, oh, well, I'm called to this sector. I don't have a people group mm-hmm. that I'm called to. Yeah. And I, I just don't, you yeah. know? And so, because I feel like we can learn from everyone. Mm-hmm. There's something I can get from somebody else. It's just, in, just, you know, as opposed to me surrounding myself, which is people of, my ethnicity, people of my um, um, faith. And, you know, I, I, so I just believe in people. And I just feel like, um, you know, I, I, um, God has given me that gift to somehow can, even if I don't know the people, I'm just saying, yeah. hey, you, need, yes. you need to know this person. <laughs> yes. <laughs> can okay. make them. And so that's what I, 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 for right now, I have an organization called, um, dance nations and it's based out of um psalms of 67 let all the nations praise him Mm -hmm. and so um and even our logo it's a map of the globe but the globe they're dancing each Mm. each nation each Mm. continent is actually in the form of a dancer so um so my my goal is really just to connect with dancers globally and um, really just to co- create a community of cross-cultural dancers mm-hmm. and to serve people and serve mm-hmm. people in, in several different areas. We have um, our teaching component and we really just getting started because we, um, 2019, we had done our first couple of, um, we call them GLEAM, GLEAM, G-L-E-A-N, GLEAM. And so we had training events and that's where, that's the training component. So we would always have a cultural piece at the beginning just to learn from different cultures. And then we'll have technique classes, Mm. you know, to to build up our skill set. But unfortunately, the pandemic hit, we were doing those in person, which was kind of good because we got to do a couple of things. We did a series called Dance of the Nation. And so we got to do a couple of things online. And it's really right now, I'm just trying to regroup and figure out where we're going from here. Mm. So we're, we're kind of brand new, and um, but still, I'm trying to figure out where we're going from here. I think I have a vision, but just trying to carry it out in in the season we're living in. Yeah. And so yeah. that's the thing where I'm, I'm needing vision. Um, I need. I just I told you about the the Latina community. That's yes. something that I'm really trying to reach. You know that community and stuff. So I'm just really just asking God to the Lord of the harvest to bring laborers. Because I don't believe, I believe that if God has given you a vision and it's a real God vision, you can't mm-hmm. do it on your own. No, no. And so I'm really just looking for those laborers who can assist in carrying out this vision. Um, yeah. So I bless you in those endeavors. And 
I've said it before and will probably say it again and again through my years that that scripture, every tribe and every tongue will praise God. And so really that's inclusive. And when we get to heaven, there's going to be a lot of dance and a lot of different cultural expressions. I don't know exactly. None of us know exactly, but I think there's going to be people on the outside of those gates before they go through and just look like <laughs> they're dancing. <laughs> That's a loud God. <laughs> and we're like, yeah, and we got to practice on earth. <laughs> so we can, if we can just get as many people now to practice on earth, that would be great. <laughs> yes. That is so great. I um on Friday nights I um kind of hang out with a group of my friends in India. Um, they have a group called Call to Worship, and it's a group of dancers. I just love them, and so just seeing them worship, you know, just in a different way. And they're so hungry. Mm -hmm. Those people are hungry not just for dance; they're hungry for God. Mm -hmm. And so you know, you see the nations. Um, God is just moving. He's just moving. He's just mm -hmm. moving through the nations, even in the dance, even mm -hmm. in the dance. And he's a God of movement. And so why not dance? He's yeah. not, he's not just, um, you know, sitting down. He, he's moving. Yes. He's moving all around us. Yes. And so, yeah. Uh, our best partner. Yes. <laughs> our absolute best partner. Well, you are absolutely beautiful. And I love the gracious spirit within you and um, how you also are a connector and just what God has deposited in you. I just bless you in your continued endeavors as a kingdom agent and know that there's so much more yet to come with every one of your yeses. There's so much more yet to come. So I bless you. I love you. And just thank you for taking time to be with us. Thank you.